Okay, it's just after nine o'clock. Out of respect for everybody's time, we're going to go ahead and start for today's lab session. And today we have this 1.3.2.4 lab, which you will not perform on the virtual VMs because it needs a machine with internet connectivity. So you guys that are here in the classroom, you'll use the normal Windows 10 desktop that you log into. Uh, you people that are doing the lab from home, you can't do this on Packet Tracer because Packet Tracer is not connected to the internet. So just use your normal, it's probably a Windows desktop of some sort. Uh, if you're running a Macintosh or a Unix or a Linux machine, the spelling of one of the commands will differ slightly and we'll cover that right away. Okay, so uh, this lab can be found and printed in the student lab printout section. It's the 1.3.2.41 tracing internet connectivity. So a lot of this lab is going to be using the command line prompt. To get the cut to the command line, um, you can click on start, start programs, accessories, command prompt, something like that. Or you can simply press the Windows key and touch the letter R and type CMD, and that will pop up a command prompt for you. Or you can search for the word command or CMD, and that will pop that up for you. And Windows has seven ways of doing everything. Okay, let me clear my screen. Okay, so on the first page, it talks about this difference of the trace or route command. If you're using a Unix machine or a Linux machine or a Macintosh machine, which is really Unix underneath, or you're working on a Cisco device like a Cisco router or a switch, which we're going to do later in the course, you would take, type the command trace route, spell out the whole thing, trace route. Hi, come in, please have a seat. We're taping, we're going. Uh, on Windows, he abbreviates it to trace route. That first spelling. So on these machines in here, you'll use that. Oops. I'm looking at the left. Trace route. So you'll type tra trace T R A C E R T, and then what what's your best supposed to be able to go to. So we're going to use trace route and ping in this. And step one near the bottom third of page one, we're going to determine network connectivity to a destination host. Now I spoke a little bit in the lecture section about the difference between ping and trace route. Ping is a pass-fail of the whole network path. Either it works or it doesn't work. And there could be 10 routers between you and the device you're trying to ping. If any one of these has any connectivity problems whatsoever, the ping would fail. You would get that no reply at all. Sounds like a Genesis song. And it wouldn't work. And if it works completely, you get the little reply from, and it gives you the IP address at ping, and it tells you the delay there. You gamers with your F-15s getting shot down. We want very small delays. Trace route, on the other hand, shows us each and every router, routers are the devices that connect networks together, like your home router, connects you to your cable company. Your cable company's got a million dollar router, connects you to the other cable company locations and their connection to the internet. And it shows you the path by path. It's kind of, it's kind of, I call it ping on steroids. It essentially does a ping of your home router, and then a ping of the cable company, and then a ping of whoever they're using for their upstream provider until you get all the way to that other end. So he tells us, first of all, we're supposed to ping uh, the Cisco. He says, top the command ping. The ping is the same, no matter what platform you're on. Unix, Linux, Cisco, Windows, it's always just ping. That's universal. The spelling difference is between trace route. So he, we're supposed to ping www.cisco.com. And it works. We got a ping back there. Now, notice it doesn't say Cisco in there. It says DSCA. Cisco uses a content provider, uses Akame as a content provider. And this is a, this is a strategy where if you're a really, really big company like Cisco or Microsoft or something like that, um, you spread out, you pay a service provider to have copies of your web pages at different strategic locations throughout the world. And so wherever they happen to try to ping you or connect to you from, you get the closest one. Akamai provides that type of service. I think my next door neighbor works for Akamai. So we got a response here. It's not the IP address that was listed in your lab, but it could be a different varying IP address depending on how they're staging the systems. So it is reachable. We got the reply back. If it hadn't worked, we would have gotten the message that it didn't work at all. And our time is three to four milliseconds. A millisecond is one thousandth of a second. That's pretty good. So you guys that are doing gaming, that's the kind of delay you're looking for. You got 157 milliseconds, maybe you going down in flames. The other guy's got better connectivity, and you you are not going to survive that dogfight. Okay, at the top of page two, 
ping one of the internet registries. The regional internet registries are the people that keep track of the domain name. So if you go and like I did and you got your own personal web page, you can get your own personal web page for like seven dollars a month. Make it any name you want to, just so long as nobody else has taken that name yet. So you go and get the name mywonderfulcompany.com. It's probably already taken. And they'll they'll give that name to you, they actually lease it to you. And they're the people that maintain that registry of names. And uh, I tried earlier, and uh, the first three worked, and the last one didn't. And this, the one for North America doesn't work, but the one for everywhere else works. So let's try pinging these and see what we get. I'm going to ping uh, the first one, www.afrinic.net. It's easy standing up in front of a bunch of people typing. Get your own class. See what it's like. Oops, I misspelled something. Let me try it again. Ping www.afrinic.net. Okay, I must have misspelled it. That worked. So we're pinging the people that that assign domain names to the continent of Africa. That's what Afrinic does. Let's try the second one. Ping apnic.net. That works. The third one should work. It did before. www.lacknick.net. Oh, I put, I put a period, a comma instead of a period. Ping www.lacnic.net. That works fine. And then Aaron didn't work before. Let's see if it's working today. It may have been slightly down. Ping www.aaron. It's not working. It's not working today. Now, I think I mentioned this. Ping and Traceroute are valuable tools for what we used to call the black hats, the malicious intruders. We can't call them that anymore because it would make them feel bad. We have to call them threat actors now. These are the people that are trying to break into your company system and hit you with the ransomware. So they use Ping and Traceroute as a means of mapping out what your network, internal network topology is because that lets them know with a map of where your servers and stuff are, what they should go after to attack. So a lot of companies will block ping, they will block trace route. Okay, so let's select one. I'll just do, uh, I'll do um, one of these in the second part with the trace route command. So we're gonna do a trace route. Step two toward the middle of page two, we're gonna use that trace route command. So I'm gonna type tra trace route instead of trace route, if you type trace route, it wouldn't work. Hi, you doing all right? Electricians are here. I don't know. All the computers were off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm psyching trace route. And let's go to www.cisco.com. So he's pinging the first router, which is your friendly neighborhood router that's in this campus somewhere. He's 10.144.100.1. And then it goes downtown. You'll see a couple from downtown. They're 10.14. That's at our data center downtown, at Trinity River Campus. And then it's leaving Trinity River Campus, and it's going to service providers, Quest, uh, Level 3. These are these big providers that connect everybody together. And it looks like it's about 10 hops from us to uh, Cisco or wherever the nearest Cisco uh, content managed provider is network connecting to. When you log on to the network academy, it's the same thing. Uh, it's hosted at a hosting center. Now, if you get your own business and you're going to have your own web server, do not put it on your own premises. It's nuts. You want to put it at a hosting provider. They've got bulletproof electricity, super high fiber speeds, and you're going to pay a fee to them to manage it for you. You just don't want to have to do that yourself. Okay, so my chart is similar to what we've shown here, except when they wrote this lab, it was in a different location, but it still ended up at Akame service provider at a different location. So this works, this is kind of, ah, uh, this is real technical. When IP packets, we have to talk about IP packets. When the network packet is sent on the network to keep it from being stuck in a loop and rotating forever and consuming endless resources, it has, it only has a certain number of routers that can pass through before it's declared dead and dropped. We call that the time delivery TTL. So the way TraceRoute works is it sends out the first packet with a time to live of one. It goes to your first router. Your first router says, your, your time is up. 
and he drops the packet, but he sends back a special message that Tracer on interprets it. He said, oh, that's hop number one. And here's his, he tells him his IP address. It's all his name. He's got one. Then he sends out the second packet with a time to live of two. It goes past your home router. It goes to the cable company. The cable company says, oh, the gentleman's time has expired. He sends back a message. And that's the way your machine learns the IP addresses and hostnet if they could figure out host names on those devices of all those individual devices. Now we're going to do a trace route to one of these uh, um, uh, name domain people. So I'll do trace route, www. Uh, I'll do the Afri Africa one. I can spell it. Well, the first two or three will be identical, leaving college land, leaving the county network. We're going to our building, our router here on the campus. Now 10.14, we're at the downtown Trinity River campus. And then we're going to exit the Tanner County campus and we're going to go into our service providers. And it's going to, it's going to London. Wow, they went to London. Oh, we had undersea, blah, 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 blah. We're into the water, uh, satellite, something. We're connected there. And look at how those delay times are increasing. It was one millisecond, one millisecond, one millisecond, oh, 100, 200, 200 milliseconds. Your F 15 is going down in flames with that kind of delay. That's a very large delay. Okay, and then we ended up with uh, somewhere in Africa is the domain register for the African continent. All right, good, that worked all right. Okay, we're almost done. This is really a long lab, isn't it? So look, let's look at this who is tool, uh, which I think I've got it. Here it is, it's on this tank. The first time you use this, he's gonna tell you, click the squares and have a bicycle in them. You know how this, make sure you're not a robot thing is. And I'm gonna use one of those domains from my DOS prompt here, I'm gonna put it in here and let look it up. So I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna look up Tarrant County College. See if that's in there. 10.14.14.1. I'll try that one. So I'll put it in here, I'll put in 10.14.14.1. Oops, let's bring focus to it. 10.14.14.1. And would you look that up for me, please? And it's a private IP address. There are certain numbers that are reserved for private IP addresses. Now, let's go to one of the other ways that's that are public and see what that tells us about it. Um, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll look up, I'll look up, um, I'll look up www.tccd.edu. Okay, that's our public. We haven't talked about public and private addresses, inside addresses yet. He's going to do the, okay, there we go. Look, there, w, uh, webadvisor.tccd.edu is our domain name. We own it. The college paid for it. Well, you taxpayers pay for it. And so you can type that from anywhere in the world, and it'll route it to our data center downtown. We'll connect to it. So it's loaned by Tarrant County College District. We used to be tccd.net. And about 6,965 days old, about 12 years ago, we stopped using .net and we got the, it's hard to get an edu domain name. You have to be a real college. Okay, anybody can get a .net. Anybody can get a .com. Anybody can get a uh, dot, .org. Uh, but uh, be the real edu, you have to really prove it. So tech contact, it's, it's Suresh. He took the class from me. Yes, yeah, Suresh, he runs our data center. He took my class and now he's running our data center. All right, so see. Class to jobs. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so in the last part, it says list the domains below from your trace re reports using this tool and put in two or three of those addresses you got from your trace route, the IP addresses of the domain name, and look it up and see who, who it was, who it belonged to. And that's the end of the lab. Okay, hang loose. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>